Lego fans! I'm back with some more old school Harry Potter, and this time we have a sealed set dating back to 2004. Tearing open a 16 year old set might seem ridiculous, but today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing set number 4752, Professor Lupin's Classroom from Lego Harry Potter! I'm super excited to get this set as it contains the last Severus Snape minifigure I need to complete the collection. When released in 2004 to accompany the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, this retailed for 18 Great British Pounds or 20 US Dollars. Today mint in box it's worth about $61, and mainly because of the value of the minifigures the used value is $43. The 155 piece part count contains 3 minifigures. Professor Remus Lupin in a dark green suit, he appears in 3 sets and is worth about $16. Next we have a very goofy looking Neville Longbottom. He's exclusive to this set and resells for about $9. And finally this may look like Professor Snape but it is actually a boggart. Snape seems to be wearing the clothing of Neville's grandmother and looks decidedly off colour. We'll find out what that's all about later in the video and we'll also be revealing every Severus Snape minifigure made so far. This set is titled Professor Lupin's Classroom which is of course the Defence Against the Dark Arts Classroom. It depicts the scene where Professor Lupin is teaching the class to defeat a boggart using the spell Ridiculous. It also looks like we get an action feature where we can reveal the boggart, or as I prefer to call it, Snape in drag. Everybody always thinks that Severus Snape's dream job was Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher. In fact he was training to be a herbology teacher, but he just couldn't keep his lily alive. Turning to the back of the box we get a much closer look at Lupin's classroom. It's by no means a big or fancy set, but it does seem to have some very cool dragon schools. I could see those coming in very useful for a Game of Thrones set. And if you're feeling creative, you could tear this apart and build something else. Just keep in mind that you only get the instructions for the main build. Also on the back of the box we have this spooky ghost town visual to show you all of the other sets that you could have got in 2004. There are some really cool sets here including the 2004 Hogwarts Castle, and I think somebody was asking me to review the Marauders map set. It always seems a shame to open up an old set like this, but at least it's a good opportunity to document what's inside the box. Here's everything you get inside that box. We've got three bags of Lego, a 30 page instruction booklet, a mail in postcard for a Lego shop at home catalogue, a flyer advertising all of the cool stuff you could have bought 16 or 17 years ago, some of the larger elements which were loose in the box, and a single sticker which I hope will still stick. I'm going to go ahead and build set number 4752, Professor Lupin's Classroom, and today this is going to be a 60 second speed build! the completed 4752 Professor Lupin's Classroom from Lego Harry Potter. As you can imagine with the 6 to 10 recommended age range this didn't take very long to put together. Build time today was just under 20 minutes. But this is a cool little set and picks out some great details from the movie. We're going to start by taking a look around the Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom, pick out some details of particular interest, and then we'll take a look at those three minifigures, the Boggart, Neville Longbottom and Professor Remus Lupin. Because I really like you guys, we're also going to be taking a look at every Professor Severus Snape minifigure ever made so far. So this is Classroom 3C, otherwise known as the Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom. 
The colour scheme is pretty much what you'd expect for one of the early LEGO Harry Potter sets based on Hogwarts. We have the iconic combination of sand green and tan. In the real Defense Against a Dark Arts classroom, there is a large and intimidating skeletal dragon. We don't have a skeleton in this set, but we do have two very cool dragon skulls. These were actually intended to be battle helmets for LEGO horses and appear in about 21 sets. Beneath the skulls, we have a number of suitably creepy artifacts. There's a creepy minifigure skull and some jars and bottles containing who knows what. You'll find more of these artifacts down at ground level, including a skeletal head in a jar. The Defense Against a Dark Arts classroom contains many skeletons and also shrunken heads. Among these artifacts, you'll also find a really nice 1x2 printed tile. This shows a partially eaten chocolate bar, which is an excellent remedy after an encounter with a Dementor. It's actually quite a rare element that only appeared in four LEGO Harry Potter sets. Replacing one of these on Bricklink is going to cost you a couple of dollars. In the corner of the classroom, you'll find a wardrobe in which Professor Lupin keeps his Boggart. A Boggart is an amortal, shape-shifting non-being that takes on the form of its observer's worst fear. In the case of Harry Potter, he sees a Dementor. Lupin, on the other hand, sees the full moon. Ronald Weasley, a giant spider. Ironically, Parvati Patel seems to be terrified of snakes, but he's absolutely cool with the creepiest clown I think I've ever seen. In the case of the LEGO version, the wardrobe has an action feature. Are you ready? It spins around to reveal Neville's worst fear, Professor Severus Snape. With some guidance from Professor Lupin, Neville uses the Boggart Banishing spell Ridiculous to turn the Boggart into something he finds amusing. Boggart Snape is suddenly attired in Neville's grandmother's clothing, including fox fur scarf, red handbag, and a ridiculous hat on the top of which is perched a large stuffed vulture. We'll take a closer look at the minifigure later in the video, but as you can see, this is a far cry from what we saw in the movie. You'll also notice that Snape is a very funny colour. I wonder why that could be. We'll find out soon. The Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom is split into two sections, which are connected by two pivot points. You can open this up to make a 90 degree angle, or close it again to make an elongated playset. It doesn't really add any value to the build, and I can't really see why LEGO bothered. The right hand section of the build is set on two levels, and there's a rather nice spiral staircase connecting the two levels. I don't think this staircase would pass a safety inspection, as there are no handrails, and a perilous gap after the bottom step. Madame Pomfrey's going to be busy. The spiral staircase can be retracted, revealing a spooky spider, which is orange for some reason. It's one of the earlier spider molds and comes complete with a large cobweb element. The upper level is presumably the teacher's office and is decorated with two trans neon orange flame elements. Thanks to a spell which allows us to see through walls, we can actually take a look at the stuff inside. We find yet another skull and some kind of potion bottle. You'll notice these are both sitting on top of a hinged element. Opening this up reveals two one by one printed textbook tiles. These might be Lupin's personal collection or could just be textbooks for the Defense Against a Dark Arts class. It's a really nice print with some very nice gold detailing and appeared in five Harry Potter sets and one Belleville set. The supremely creepy 5825 Stella and the Fairy. The quality of the stuff as we get to the back of the room is even better. In a direct reference to the book, we have Professor Lupin's dilapidated suitcase. It does open, but sadly contains no cool stuff. Next, we have the magical gramophone, which provided the musical accompaniment to Professor Lupin's Boggart Banishing lesson. And finally, I'm sure you've noticed this rather interesting looking book. This appears in several of the early Harry Potter sets and has some magnificent printing. On the front here, we have some kind of man-eating vine. On the spine, some kind of fungus with some slime on the cap. And then around the back, we've got a collection of different funguses. But sadly, there is nothing inside here. So that was the rather resplendent Classroom 3C, the Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom. In just a minute, we're going to be taking a look at every LEGO Severus Snape minifigure ever made. But before then, let's check out the minifigures from this set. The 155-piece part count includes three minifigures. Professor Remus John Lupin, Order of Merlin First Class. A Boggart in the form of Severus Snape, dressed in the clothes of Neville Longbottom's grandmother. And finally, the Snape-fearing Neville Longbottom himself. 
This is by far my favourite minifigure from the set, Lycanthropy Afflicted Defence Against a Dark Arts Teacher, Professor Remus John Lupin. He later marries Nymphadora Tonks, who finally makes an appearance in the 2020 range of LEGO Harry Potter sets. They also have a son called Teddy, who gets completely ignored in the movies. The legs are a standard dark green part, but then we have this rather shabby torn torso print. Remus is wearing a white shirt with black tie and green jacket. He also has this grey coloured travelling coat which makes him look like a superhero. The facial expression is very interesting. Across the face you can see the scars inflicted by Fenrir Greyback to Remus Lupin when he was a child. That's of course when he was infected by lycanthropy and became a werewolf. The other curious detail is the 5 o'clock shadow showing the moustache. I guess this is a reference to Lupin being rather shabby and generally unshaved. The hair is absolutely fantastic and only appeared in this colour for two Professor Lupin minifigures. It also appeared in Blonde for Professor Gilderoy Lockhart. We'll catch up with him on a later review. The texture in this element is fantastic, it's so bouffant and so over the top. HP042 Professor Remus Lupin in a dark green suit is worth about $16 and appears in two other sets. 4758 the second edition Hogwarts Express and 10132 the motorised Hogwarts Express. Now that's a valuable set. Next we have what I can only describe as a very poor recreation of the shapeshifting Boggart. In this case the Boggart has shapeshifted into Neville Longbottom's worst fear, Professor Snape. With a wave of the wand and a mutter of the words ridiculous, Neville has turned the Boggart into a version of Snape wearing his grandmother's clothes. Or some of them. The legs are a stock element in this sand green colour. The torso on the other hand is something else. Boggart Snape should be wearing a dark green dress but instead we have this sand green colour. There is some detail there on the pockets and we do see a button poking through. The real disappointment though is the fox fur stole. This should be a stuffed fox carrying a dead mouse. Instead we've got some kind of murderous pussycat. In keeping with the other characters there is no printing around the back. But we do have a strangely ghost coloured face and also grey hands to match. The hair certainly resembles Snape's dark black lank hair. This element was used for Snape minifigures between 2001 and 2007. But what is going on with the colour of Snape's face? He looks like he's been dead for 30 years. For some reason on these early Snape minifigures, Lego decided it would be good for him to glow in the dark. To demonstrate that we're going to have to switch the camera to full auto and kill all of the lights. I still don't know why Snape glows in the dark, but it sure is creepy in the studio with all the lights out. The HP044 Professor Snape Boggart is exclusive to this set and resells for about $13. Finally dressed in Gryffindor uniform, we have the Snape-fearing, herbology-loving Neville Longbottom. This minifigure consists of dark grey legs and a dark grey torso complete with white shirt, Gryffindor tie and school jumper trimmed with Gryffindor house colours. Even though the HB043 Neville Longbottom is exclusive to this set, he's the least valuable character at about $9. That's because most of these elements are used on many other minifigures. The facial expression shows a very goofy and awkward looking Neville Longbottom with oversized front teeth. Actor Matthew Lewis who played Neville Longbottom certainly grew into those teeth. According to Mrs H he's quite the catch now. The hair works really well for the character but is actually a really common element. In fact, in various colour schemes it's used on almost 500 minifigures. The only other notable feature about Neville is a black cape which makes him look like Count Dracula. So there you have all three minifigures from set number 4752 Professor Lupin's classroom. But I did promise to show you something special. Allow me to introduce every Severus Snape minifigure so far from LEGO Harry Potter. In total we have seven minifigures and a micro figure. What you see here is every Severus Snape Lego has made between 2001 and 2018. The first three are quite similar and appeared in Lego Harry Potter sets between 2001 and 2004. The HP012 version was quite common and resells for about $8. You'll find him in 4705 Snape's Class, 4709 Hogwarts Castle and 4733 The Dueling Club. We actually have a really nice print here for an early minifigure with the printing continuing onto the legs. The face and hair are identical on all three of these minifigures. In fact in a moment I think we'd better check if they all still glow in the dark. 
The basic blueprint for the printing continues through to the 2004 version. The HP050 Severus Snape appeared in 4751 Harry and the Marauders map. He's not crazy valuable and sells for about $9. Do their faces still glow in the dark? Let's find out! It's pitch black in my studio and I'm glad these are the only things glowing down here. The rarest and most valuable version of Professor Snape is the HP082 version. This appeared in set number 5378 Hogwarts Castle, you'll find a review of that on my channel, and this guy sells for a whopping $37. The torso printing gets a much needed upgrade and looks much closer to the movie version. But my favourite part about this minifigure has to be the facial print. This absolutely nails the look of Severus Snape as played by Alan Rickman. The print even includes some hair hanging down over the face. Despite many cosmetic upgrades, this minifigure has the same hair element that has been used since 2001. Fast forward to 2010 and we get a new facial print and a new hairstyle. What doesn't change is the design of the torso print, although in the later minifigure it's picked out in grey instead of purple. This is the HP100 Severus Snape who appeared in the 4842 Hogwarts Castle set, and also the 852983 Harry Potter magnet set. You can just about see him entombed in very shiny plastic. The HP 100 Snape minifigure is worth about $11. After a gap of 8 years, Severus Snape returned in the 2018 wave. Although he got an updated facial print, the hair was still the same. I've got to say, I prefer the facial print from the earlier figure. The HP 134 version released in 2018 is worth only $3 and appears in 75953 Hogwarts Whomping Willow and 75956 Quidditch Match. The printing on this version of the minifigure is simple but very elegant. I really like the button down purple tunic and the robes that flow down over the legs. We also get some subtle printing around the back for the creases in the jacket. Also from 2018 and dressed very similarly we have this micro figure. This comes with the magnificent 71043 Hogwarts Castle. As it's tiny and not technically a minifigure, you can get one of these for about a dollar. And finally, for our recap of every Lego Severus Snape ever made, we have the Boggart Snape we should have got in the first place. We're sticking with 2018, and this is the HP 173 Severus Snape Boggart from the Harry Potter minifigure collection. This was one of four promotional sets released for Bricktober in 2018. It was a Toys R Us exclusive, but before it could get released, Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy. I actually ended up getting mine as a promotional gift from Barnes & Noble. Talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. This time LEGO got the colour scheme right with the dark green. They included a dark red handbag, a convincing fox fur stole, and even managed to include the hat except for the vulture on top. The 2018 Boggart Snape outclasses the 2004 version in every single way. The fox fur stole still looks a little bit like a cat, but we do get a more convincing mouse. We also get a shoulder piece to help complete the illusion. Around the back we have more detail, including a spider climbing up Boggart Snape's back. The minifigure head used for Boggart Snape is the same as the 2018 minifigure. Similarly around the back we have the same snarling expression. The hat was a good choice for Boggart Snape and even included a hole on top for the vulture. It's just a real shame that LEGO didn't actually manage to create one of those. One detail that LEGO did absolutely perfectly is the red handbag. You actually hear this described in the movie and you see Boggart Snape holding it. Technically you could say this is a Boggart minifigure and not a Snape minifigure. But clearly it has the appearance of Professor Severus Snape and it's truly earned its part in this every Snape minifigure portion of the video. So that was set number 4752, Professor Lupin's Classroom from LEGO Harry Potter. It is really nice to get a LEGO version of the Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom. I know this isn't perfect, but it does include a lot of really nice details. For example, the Dragon Skulls to represent the skeleton. The Boggart Confining Wardrobe was a really nice graphic. And I really appreciated details such as a bar of chocolate. And Professor Lupin's dilapidated suitcase. The minifigure selection was good, and my favourite had to be Professor Lupin himself. Boggart Snape, on the other hand, was a complete letdown, and I've no idea what that whole glow-in-the-dark thing was about. 
Maybe it was just some kind of sales gimmick, or Lego bought a load of cheap plastic from a factory near Chernobyl. This was a great excuse to bring together every Snape minifigure ever made. And I really hope you enjoyed this Lego Harry Potter unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more Lego Harry Potter goodness. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.